like for me saying that I need to focus on sleep for some people, maybe that's just their thing. They're always in bed by 10 and they don't need to be up before eight. So they never even need to worry about the sleep. So they should be focusing on something else. Whereas that's it for me. But um, I think the biggest thing is definitely like keeping a balance across the whole thing. Mm. Cause there, like Ben says, there is no balance. Like I can't, like I won't skip out my training. If something is on my training plan, I'm doing that. Like right. no matter what, like that's just, that's just discipline for me. So that could be regardless of the sleep that I got or the mindset that I have or have I eaten or not. Like I'll I'll be in the pool until 8 p.m. If I need to be in the pool until 8 p.m. It's not optimal. Like I'd rather be done earlier, but I'm doing that. We are here because we know the outcomes in our lives are within our control. That taking absolute ownership of how we eat, sleep, train, think, and connect with each other is how we'll optimize our health and happiness. That chasing excellence is how we grab hold of what is possible. Our mission is to one, live on the run, always three, chasing, two, never one, stop. Go. Greetings, everyone. Hello. Hi, Patrick. <laughs> Katrin. Hi. Hello, Katrin. <laughs> we, are, well, we are joined once more by Katrin. Thank you for coming in. Um, today, we wanted to talk about, we want to talk to you about something that we've talked about here on the podcast a good amount. Um, and that's something that we've sort of uh, dubbed the uh, the five factors of health. Um, so it's sort of every time we do this, we want to make sure we recap what that is in case it's mm -hmm. the first time somebody's sort of introduced to it. So maybe, Ben, if you want to give us a sense of uh, or an overview of what the five factors of health are, and then we'll sort of dive into the conversation from there. Yeah, I, I always like to start with what the two obvious ones are, which is if you went to your doctor, your doctor essentially say, like, something's not right. We need you to exercise and eat better. And that's what the do a normal doctor would say. But... To me, that's like a starting point and there's more that encompasses your overall health. And I wish that more health professionals would talk in these terms. So it, it absolutely is exercise, it is movement, it is your training. Um, it absolutely is what you eat and it's nutrition, but it's more than that. And the next factor would be, the third factor would be your sleep and we know how important that is. The fourth factor would be your mindset or do you live in this kind of like as Albert Einstein said, do you have the most important question you have to ask yourself is do you live in a, um, a friendly or hostile world? And if you ask, answer that question, it determines a lot of your yeah. life slash health. Um, the last one, which we've kind of deemed as kind of like most important is relationships and building strong relationships, not the number of them, but how um, meaningful and deep those relationships are. There are two other factors we could talk about, mm -hmm. but we don't focus on those because you can't move the needle on them as much. And that is your genetics obviously mm -hmm. play a mm -hmm. major role. And then lastly would be kind of your environment. If you live in a small grid in city versus a tropical paradise island, it's going to be, that's going obviously going to affect your health. But those are kind of like not as malleable <coughs> as what you're eating and right. what you're sleeping. Right. Okay. So we've done, <clears throat> we've done uh, whole episodes on the five factors and, and, and a lot of the individual components in there. So obviously we want to, not repeat ourselves here. And, and the reason that we wanted Katrin in today is because we wanted to take a look at what the five factors look like for you, mm -hmm. knowing that um, you're not uh, you're not in the same position that say I'm in or that most people are in, where we're just trying to get a balance across those things in pursuit of just sort of like overall health and well-being. Um, that's clearly not I mean, it is, but it's not specifically what you're after mm -hmm. in this period of your life. Mm -hmm. And obviously you work with athletes who are sort of in that same thing. So that's sort of what we wanted to talk about today, which is the, you know, the five factors as it looks to a high level competitor or an athlete or somebody who really wants to pursue, um, you know, in, in our case, CrossFit, but I guess it could probably be a lot of different things, whether it's sport or maybe otherwise. Um, how does it affect a world champion? Yeah, exactly. And, and you or know, how does a world champion look at five factors of health? Yeah. So I wanted to sort of enter into the conversation in, in, a, in a spot that we haven't really, it'll sort of hopefully bridge the gap between the sort of the, um, and I'll stop calling them like normal and, and casual, <laughs> you imply that you're not normal, but, um, but my, 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 I sort of want to get into the conversation with a question to you, Ben, about um, when we look at the five factors, do you think that there's a place where you would recommend somebody um, really tries to focus and prioritize uh, the idea being that if you can, if you can sort of ham, if you really get this right, the other four factors will, yeah. uh, will elevate themselves just by virtue of having focused on again, like maybe for example, like if you just get enough sleep, you're going to make better nutrition choices. You're going to have more energy to move, you know, to train more, et cetera. Is there a factor that you feel like 
if you only could focus, if you only wanted to focus on one, this is the one I would recommend. Well, we've talked about the relationship one a lot, but yeah. I think that it stems for if you're going to focus on one of them. I like what you just said, which is sleep. And if, you know, because everyone knows how they feel so good after a really great night's sleep versus yeah. a poor night's sleep and how hard it is to make those good decisions. But I really think it starts with your mindset. Mm. If you are, you know, if you have the right positive attitude, if you're humble enough, if you're willing to, um, if you have uh, willing to learn and grow, and if you see things as opportunities but not as obstacles, and there is no finish line, it's just trying to live a fulfilled life at the end of your life. I think if you have that overarching mindset, everything else becomes a lot more malleable and a yeah. lot you can do a lot more. Whereas if you just buckle down on your nutrition and you're 100% compliant. I don't know how much it, it will carry over for sure, but I don't think it has the same carryover as the mindset one does. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the reasons that when I'm working with my athletes, that is where I start. Yeah. Even at the, the very highest level, I want to start with the mindset piece. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the to bridge that is, does that feel right for you in terms of what, not only maybe how you've done it so far, but mm -hmm. that, you know, in, in sort of a bubble, you would say like, yes, that's the thing that I would recommend people who were trying to pursue some some version of what you're trying to pursue, mm -hmm. would you also recommend that they focus on mindset sort of first, knowing that if you get that right or if you really figure that out, the other ones becomes not easier, but become sort of uh, closer to your grasp? Yeah, um, I, I agree very much with both of you. And I could tend to be a perfectionist and trying to do everything 100% right. And you can never do all of those and trying to do everything, sometimes everything can fall apart. Yeah. And what I've I've tried to focus more on, right, let's try and focus most on this or most on this. Um, and what I've found works the best for me. And I never know what comes before, you know, was it the mindset or the sleep, but it's sleep for me. Really? And I always feel like I've been through times where I've thought, all right, if I read more today, if I get up earlier so that I can start my day and I can read more, I'm cutting out sleep but in getting in my reading yep. and then I start my day good. And yeah, I might be in a better mindset and might be learning more, but I'm tired and I feel that that affects my training. And if it affects my training, I'm going to make poor decisions otherwise and less sleep again. Cause I'm like, all right, let's read or let's read before bed and you're cutting out sleep there. Um, whereas I feel like if I decide that I'm going to be in bed by 10 lights out by 10 mm -hmm. and I don't set an alarm before eight o'clock. I might get up earlier, but if I get those like eight to 10 hours of sleep, I wake up and so much, like my mood is so much better. And whether I get the reading done that morning or during lunchtime or while I'm in the sauna, I get the reading done. Right. And I'm still like, if I sleep well, I feel like my training is going better. And when I can give more into my training, my mindset is better. I make better nutrition choices. And then I'm happier to be with, Ben or Heather or my friends or call my mom. It's like, I don't know. I feel like that for me, it's it's the sleep for me. That kind of carries so what's, over. What's, that's so fascinating to me is that like <clears throat> we're talking about two things that the doctors don't talk about. Right. Right. Like mine was mindset. Yours was sleep. Yet when somebody goes to, when someone thinks about health and wellness, they don't default to those two. They fall, default to like, I, I get to the gym and I got to clean up my eating. And what we're both saying is like, those are almost side effects or symptomatic of mm -hmm. getting enough sleep. They're almost side effects or symptomatic of having the right mindset. Now, maybe it's because we're you already have the other two buttoned up so mm -hmm. much, and you. It's not a question of like knowledge or willpower. It's like if you get that, they fall into place, and maybe other people struggle with that more. But it would be interesting to see if if people um, put more emphasis into mm -hmm. those. If it would carry out, if they went into every single day feeling really good. Now, whether that's yeah from a, a meditation practice or this um, a gratitude journal or it's this like mindset thing or it's just from not being sleep deprived. Yeah. How would that snowball into people's instead of like, I got to get to the gym right. and I got to eat the salad instead of the cookies. Mm -hmm. The thing that's really interesting about that to me or that I think about there is looking at it from a slightly different perspective of somebody who goes to a gym like, or goes to a CrossFit gym. And we all know the value of what, what happens when you go there. Not only... Uh, in the training, but in the relationships that you end up mm -hmm. building. So I think a lot of people end up um, putting the relationships that they that they create in a CrossFit gym uh, 
not first, but but they they make that a really big priority. And because they're creating relationships with people who are also have you know putting a, uh, an emphasis on uh, well being, nutrition, paying attention to these things, that by virtue of being around people who are thinking about those things, their nutrition gets better, their sleep gets better, their mindset gets better. So it's interesting. You can kind of enter into this wherever it makes sense for you to enter into it. But I think it's interesting that if you figure out what the right one is, it can, uh, uh, no matter who you are, can kind of elevate the others. Mm -hmm. We know, yeah, None of these things live in isolation. If you improve one, it doesn't have carryover effect to the others. And as you were just saying, is that the power of a CrossFit gym is the power of environment. Right. And we've talked before on this about the power of environment and how I think, and what I've come to kind of realize a lot through reading um, Atomic Habits by mm. James Clear, yeah. our friend James. I still have to read that. You, oh my I gosh, dude. I know. Wow. Um, I, know. I have a copy for you. Actually. Okay, awesome. <laughs> um, a signed copy for you. Ooh, even better. For real. I signed it. <laughs> 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 James sent, yeah. Yeah, uh, awesome. Um, but as he talked about, which is so powerful, right, is this power of environment. If you put yourself with a bunch of like-minded people are trying to achieve great things that don't complain and have the right priorities. Like you're going to get sucked up into that environment. Yeah. And the like, the, the opposite is the exact opposite, right? If you put yourself in an environment, I don't care how motivated you are, you put yourself in a terrible environment and your willpower is only strong for so long. Right. You're going to crack mm -hmm. and crumble at some point. Yeah. Haven't you guys also noticed with like the environment that you're in, like you behave differently around like, totally. like, like certain people. Yep. And it's like, I think you should always seek out those people that you feel like you behave in the best version of yourself. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so um, really, really cool. The, the way I always think about five factors, for, just for me personally, is I try to come up with sort of like one little metric that I try to hit every day um, that, you know, in line with each one of those five yep. factors. Mm -hmm. um, nothing huge, like nothing that, that requires a ton out of me that I won't be able to accomplish it. Um, but that's, that to me is how I sort of at least think about it. I obviously don't always hit it. Yeah, I, know, um, I love that. Um, but that's how I think about the five factors. I sort of think of it as like a, a, a daily sort of uh, attempt at getting the balance across that. So I wanted to, one of the things I was curious about you, Catherine, is what does a day look like for you? Even mm -hmm. if you don't think about it as the five factors, I'm really yep. curious, like if you've already put in habits or, you know, you've created habits or you've got systems or whatever, where you're actually, you are actually checking sort of the five mm -hmm. boxes, you know? Um, so I'm wondering if maybe you could walk us through, you sort of already started a little bit with the sleep, um, but if you can maybe walk us through what like a normal day looks like when you're not like traveling or doing a bunch mm -hmm. of, you know, stuff for Reebok, you know, just like a normal, you're just a normal training day maybe. Um, so right now, like I say, like I go through and this is a great time for us to be talking about this because I have been traveling a ton for the past like six weeks and you come out of it and you always feel exhausted no yeah. matter like how hard you try to keep everything as normal as possible. Um, so that's something that I've come back to is the sleep. Like I have, I try and work on everything the best that I can, but that's the one thing that I will prioritize in front of everything else. Like if it is you know, 9 p.m. and I haven't norm attacked or read or, you know, and it's almost time for bed, like I will skip those things and I'd rather sleep. Yeah. So if I'd, I want to do those things, but sleep is number one for me. So right now I have been doing that like bedtime at 10 o'clock and I set the alarm for eight. And then normally um, I'd be at, I'm at the gym at 930. So I have those like, I have that an hour and a so half. That's 10 hours of sleep? Maybe. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. I'm just, I'm just kind of putting yeah. that Yeah. I'm sure yeah. that that's So that's like awesome. now, like I say, like I have been so tired, I have been in bed until 8 a.m. Mm. So it's been 10 hours So of it's sleep. cool that you let your body like, if you need it, there's yeah. a couple extra hours, yeah. but if you don't, I come love up. my days. So this is one of my favorite things is if I'm up at 6.30 and I can do a bike or a run and then have my breakfast and I have like these long mornings, I love that. But I was cutting out sleep and I just found that it wasn't, even though like it is great, like if I'm up at that hour, mm -hmm. great, but sleep has to come first. Um, and I love slow morning. So I love cooking breakfast. I read a page out of um, the Daily Stoic. That's what we're doing this year. Yep. Um, and if I have any time, normally not now, but sometimes I'll like I'll call my mom, I'll call my sister or my dad or my grandpa, like someone over breakfast. And then I'm at the gym by 930. You've already checked every yeah. box like by <laughs> 930. Yeah. You just set, it like, does that's set every, my day up yeah. really nicely. Yeah. Um, and then when I get to the gym... Normally, we chat with Ben. We go over the day, and that whole first session is normally when I work with Ben, and we get to do, um, and that would normally be more focused work, whether it's something like muscle ups or lifting or mat cons that we're doing. Um, and then take a break in my day, and then do my second session of the day. A um, couple times a week, I'll go see a physical therapist. 
and um, I love ending my days um, in the sauna. So mm. whether I swim in sauna, and I always bring my book into the sauna and read, and then dinner at night, and then um, and then I just wind down. And I normally at night because it's too late to call anyone because like Iceland is four right. or five hours ahead. <laughs> right. Um, that's when it's normally just like. I do something mindless. Like, I'm so embarrassed to even admit this, but, like, recently you've just been, like, watching The Bachelor. Oh, my God. And, like, I, I told you. That's why I'm kind of, like, admitted this to the world. Yes. In the hopes that yes, maybe you'll stop Yes, I got sucked it? in. Yeah. <laughs> you, you and Maya and Brooke. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, at least you're you're, yeah. you're doing it with friends, so maybe yeah. there's some value there. I'm curious, maybe, it, what, is, what does yours look like, Ben? What does a day look like for you? And, and... Uh, again, with that in mind of the sort of like the, the five factors, you know, where, where, do, where do you fit them in and how do you prioritize yeah, them? Yeah. So um, in terms of sleep, I don't do nearly as good a job as Katrin does, but I'm also not trying to be a world champion yeah. ath- athlete. Um, I, I'm trying to be in bed at 930 and then I get up at 530 every morning. So there's my eight hours and I'm yep. trying to do that. A lot of times it falls to seven and a half. I, 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 I suffer if it's under seven, like mm. my day is going to be gone. So yeah. it makes me think a little bit like Katrin is right with the sleep thing, maybe first. Um, from there, I, um, um, I kind of have like a little morning routine a little bit, um, nothing that's super, it, it's, it's fallen off in the last six months or so. It used to be really phenomenal. It used to involve daily stoic and some mindset stuff. It's, um, it's evolved into more of kind of like getting ready. I get to the gym at six fifteen, six thirty, and I take a class. So now I have two buckets, I guess, yep. um, after class, um, I hang out with my members and build relationships and stuff uh, of that sort for about an hour. Then I coach my class. Um, and then I start my day with cat, which mm-hmm. is usually like that kind of like 10 o'clock to one o'clock ish in there somewhere. Um, after that, it's kind of businessy stuff. Um, and I try and put in some um, mindset or development, personal development stuff in there, whether it's an hour or it's a half hour towards the end of the day. And then I'm always home at, um, I leave the, the gym slash office at 5.30 and I'm home um, in time to spend time with my family. And I really try and make the really strong connections there yeah. where I go home and I plug my phone in upstairs and I don't bring my computer home. So I'm completely present. And then again, try and wind down and back in bed at 9.30 and rinse, wash, repeat. I think the only, maybe one you didn't touch on is the, the uh, nutrition. nutrition stuff. Yeah. So the way I do nutrition, I, I'm lucky enough to, as Katrin is as well, to be sponsored by a meals service provider, Paleo Power Meals. So I don't need to prepare my meals. Right. Um, they're at the gym and they're at home. So it cuts out all of that, um, like cooking and tinkering and teetering and time and resources that would be poured into that. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, pull it out, phenomenal. It's delivered twice a week. And um, I feel really good and confident about my nutrition um, because of that. Yeah. It would be a struggle otherwise. Yeah. yeah. It's like, especially because we are trying to cram so many things in and you want to maximize your day. Right. It's like, when I'm hungry, like, that's something with that great should, choices available. Yeah, it's like you have all these meats that otherwise might take you an hour to cook, and you yeah. wouldn't be eating in an hour mm-hmm. to like you pick, pull them out. And if you like, if you do salads, it's cold, and if you want to heat them up, you just quickly put them on a pan. Right. So. so, like, if if um in the summer, <laughs> I don't necessarily um like just always in the winter, I'll just take something and heat it up. But in the summer, it's like more like salads and stuff, mm-hmm. and that I'll take. The kind of nice thing is, it's like whether I take one of their prepared salads or it's a matter of like taking their ingredients and making one, which is what I would do a lot of. Um, I'm still preparing food, so I'm trying to relate this to be like, yeah. don't have the option of like mm-hmm. a, a meal service company, which would be a, I know, a we phenomenal are option. With that. Super lucky with it. Mm-hmm. Would be um, having easy, like what I would do, I would spend the extra money, if this was me, to go to this, when I went to the supermarket and I would buy already pre-cut up vegetables. Mm-hmm. Like instead of buying a pepper, I would get sliced peppers. To me, that if it's going to incentivize me to eat healthier because of that yeah so i can just throw if i'm like oh i don't want to make a salad yeah. instead i'm just gonna grab you know the, <laughs> it's so lazy but it's true yeah, yeah. it's for me like, it's you're so life. much more like if it cuts yeah. out a couple minutes of like having to cut it up you're like so much more likely to pick it out and then so eat i could it. either cut yeah. it up or i could go for whatever it is the bad choice is yeah. like i'm just gonna yeah and i think i feel like i don't remember which episode we talked about but you, you something you talked about was like 
uh, making it as easy as possible yes. to make the right decisions. Yeah. And you yes. guys, you guys, yeah, like, like you said, cut out steps. Yeah, to you be guys like, do oh, have a bit no, of a not privilege, right now. but like yeah. <laughs> the, what you're really doing is you're saying, I don't want to make a bad choice later, so I'm going to do something now, yes. so that I don't have to make a bad choice. So I don't have to make a make choice it at as all. Make it easy as possible. Right? And whether that's you do, you know, Sunday meal prep, which a lot of people do, or you, whatever it is. Here's what I would do: if I was living by myself and I didn't have, and I didn't go through those steps, and I got home and there was. A bunch of spinach and arugula and some full peppers and some full carrots and um, some raw chicken. You would I would have a bowl not, of cereal. I would have a, it's exactly yes. right. I would have a bowl <laughs> of cereal instead. You are, that's exactly what I was yeah. gonna say. That's exactly what I would do. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay, I wasn't gonna go there, but what I do is because I like I don't cook and I'm trying to I wanna set that as a goal for myself. Yeah. Like cook once a oh, week, good. like once a week. It's not even a lot. But I like deli meat. Like deli meat is so easy. Like I like the turkey and you cut it up quickly and you put it into a salad and a yeah. salad is five minutes to prepare. Yeah. That does involve chopping, yeah. but not a lot of it. That's what, yeah, that was so what I would you know? I knowing that about myself yeah. and knowing I would make that choice, that's why you make it as easy as you can in the front end. So I don't have to default to that. And I would just be able to make a salad really yeah. quick. Yeah, no, I think about it. it's the episode. I think we called it uh, "Building Stronger Nutritional Strategies" or right. something like that. Uh-huh. So we talk about that for twenty or thirty minutes. Um, <laughs> outside of the the not cooking very much, um, is there one of these five factors that we've been talking about that is or were was particularly challenging for you to sort of rein in as you really thought about your life and said, like, I have to optimize these things so that I can compete as at as high a level as possible? Were there any that uh, well, maybe both. Were there any that are particularly easy for you? Like, got it. Don't don't even really have to think about it very much. Um, and has there been any that that maybe you like kind of uh, went in and out of a little bit as you figured out uh, how to do it for yourself? I think we're constantly like going in and out of like at some point in time, like some things are easier than other. And I think it just depends on like where you are in the season and where you are in like in your whole thing. Like, um, like for me saying that I need to focus on sleep for some people, maybe that's just their thing. They're always in bed by 10 and they don't need to be up before eight. So they never even need to worry about the sleep. So they should be focusing on something else. Whereas that's it for me. But um, I think the biggest thing is definitely like keeping a balance across the whole thing. Mm. Cause there, like Ben says, there is no balance. Like I can't, like I won't skip out my training. If something is on my training plan, I'm doing that. Like right. no matter what, like that's just, that's just discipline for me. So that could be regardless of the sleep that I got or the mindset that I have or have I eaten or not. Like I'll I'll be in the pool until 8 p.m. if I need to be in the pool until 8 p.m. It's not optimal. Like I'd rather be done earlier, but I'm doing that. But does that leave enough time for me to then go have dinner with my friends or stop at home, have dinner with the Bergerons or stop at home when I'm in Iceland? So there are all these things that like I would love to be able to spend so much more time with my friends. I would love to be able to go to London and see my dad a lot more or go on vacation, but I can't. So I know that I kind of do put those things not, I don't want to say on the back end because I do try really hard with the time that I have. And I do feel like they all know the training that I'm going through and everyone really is so supportive. But I will say that that does take something like you do have to make those choices and It'll be later, but it's like in this time of my life, this is what I'm doing. So I am getting in all of my training in the day. And that's like, it's not even a question if I am or not. Um, with that, like the nutrition has to come with it. If you're not getting in the sleep, you're not recovering. If you're not getting nutrition and you're not recovering. Um, and the same with the mind. I feel like the mindset is probably like the second one. Like yeah. you say, like if you look at things as like, oh, I have to do this it's so much harder than you get to do this. And that's something that like, it's just the way that you look at things. And are you looking at it as sacrifices or your choices? Are you looking at it as um, opportunities to get better or something or something that you have to do because you're so bad at it? You know, so I think it just like, it just changes your perspective of the thing. And I think it can like, I don't even know what to say, like advance the longevity of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you're gonna burn out way quicker if everything is a negative, then if you can look at it as a positive. I can't remember where I started or where we're going with this answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that you, you nailed it. Yeah. Like, to me, it was like, that's what I thought you were gonna say. It's like, training is the easy one for you. It's like the one that like, it's it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like training is like, there's no question. Um, and I think the relationship one is the one that um, is sacrificed amongst all the other ones. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't sound like it's 
neglected. It's just you just recognize it's that one that's, if if one has to go away yeah. today, yeah, that might be the one. That, like I, that, if I can't go and have a coffee with my friends because I didn't do my running that I haven't done my running that day, like I will go do my running. Right. Um. So it's more just like, like it's just a non-negotiable, and I right. think that's that's kind of like what I was trying to get at with the sleep. Whereas, yeah. um, I would I don't know why I just like. It's it. I like to stay up until 11. It's just like kind of that's when I'd be like, oh, I should go to bed. But that is too late for me for when I want to start the day and for how much sleep I want to get. So I have to put focus into that area. Whereas other people just, Brooke, for example, she just likes going to bed a lot earlier and it's a lot easier for her to maybe go to bed that early. So it's just like, I think we all have these different areas of where we need to focus and where we can optimize more. And then there are other areas like training for me, like other people have to like, make sure they get to the gym right i just can't wait to get to the gym it's just a non-negotiable <laughs> right. it's not even a question it never has been for me with training so like we say we have these like mm. i think they're just different levels and different things we need to focus on yeah um ben how much uh how much do you talk to you know katrin brooke and cole about um about the things sort of we're talking about here in terms of like uh the balance between them yep. the importance of each one of them um and then how much how important is it for you to know how Cole is sleeping and, yep. and you know, if he's had a bad week, you know, not that I imagine Cole would, but like if he's had just like, if he's really down for whatever and he's, yep. and he's getting real negative for whatever reason, like how, how one, how important it is for you to know these things for your athletes. Um, and then two, sort of, how do you go about checking in on them? If that's the right way to, to put it. So what we're talking about is the five factors for optimal health. Yeah. I, for my athletes, have five factors of optimal performance. Okay. It, they're two different things. Performance and health are two different things. Right. We, we might be sacrificing, and we're okay with this, sacrificing long-term health for short-term performance. That's what the objective of an elite athlete like Katrin is. So what we've done is we've substituted out the relationship one, so it makes sense that that was the one she had the most trouble with, for we actually split out sleep with another one, which is what you have to talk about, which is recovery. We don't talk about recovery in terms of the um, five factors of health, but for our athletes, it is a huge one. And for the early parts of our, um, when I start, first start working with an athlete, um, I actually have for some of them a scorecard that they actually check off every day. Uh, much like we talked on this before, is like you said, um, you, you asked Katrin, is there one, you mentioned, yep. is there one that you kind of like, um, we have like four or five for each of these things. So for your sleep protocol, I had four or five things in terms of like, what is the room at the right temperature? Are you yeah. sleeping for seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours? Um, do you have a, a nighttime routine? Are you using blackout lights? Okay, for your training, did you um, do your warm up appropriately? Did you do your activation? Did you do your mindset? Did you get all of your training done? Did you swim, dot, dot, dot. For your recovery, it's did you Normatec? Did you Epsom salt bath? Did you um, use your muscle stim? Did you get professional body work done? So. We have um, in the early part when I'm trying to set up habits and protocols um, for the first year of working with an athlete, I check in on that stuff. Um, I didn't have to with Katrin. We didn't create those spreadsheets because she lived with me. Right. So I, I knew right. what was going on. When I was working with Cole, we actually had a spreadsheet that he would check off and we dove down these rabbit holes of focusing on these details to make sure that these things were happening. But all of my athletes know the factors that we talk about, um, how important they are. Um, and how to um, kind of like hit the metrics for each one. Mm -hmm. And then after we set habits, I, it, it'd be ridiculous for me to be the big brother checking in right. all the time. Like, what time did you go to bed last night, Catherine? <laughs> like, that's just not my role as a coach. Right. In the beginning, it's I'm there to help establish habits. Yep. But then from there, step back and hopefully, um, you know, they're incredibly dedicated professional athletes. Right. They don't need the the babysitting and the monitor. Yeah, they just need the 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 setup and the, and the understanding of what you're trying to do. The beginning of every year, I send them, I send Katrin beginning of every year. I send her text every single day of like, this is what we mean by mindset. This is our approach to mindset. This is the way we take mindset to training competition in everyday life. This is the way we think about nutrition. This is how we focus on nutrition. These are the important factors to us for nutrition. This is how we think about sleep. And I, Every day, I'll send like two, um, um, I should say, um, I'll send two, three, or four days on each one of those things. Yep. And again, I don't hammer it every rinse, wash, repeat, but yep. every season, I don't know if you know this, but it's the same ones you get every <laughs> single year. But they're just as good. They're, yeah. I tweak them they're a little bit each year as I learn more right, stuff. Of course. Yeah. But, yeah. 
Um, I, I'm curious what kind of, you know, we've sort of maybe touched on a few different things here, but I'm curious what kind of like, I don't want like hacks and tricks and products and things that you guys have found uh, help you, you know, like we talked about paleo power meals. That's a, like, that's a great hack if you can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what else have you guys found that is, that have helped you um, and maybe your athletes uh, make sure that they're sort of uh, optimizing these things as much as possible. Right. And, and it could, again, it could be anything. All right, let's go. Be, maybe we go through it like category. Gonna, yeah, category. that's what I was going to say. Otherwise okay. it seems so overwhelming. All right. Here's, you ask, you say the category and then we'll let's think about it for a second and okay. then we'll both come up and say it at the same time. <laughs> okay. So we'll go with uh, sleep first. Okay. Um, Getting enough of it. <laughs> that's the but what's helped yeah. you? Well, well, I mean. No, for real. I think people, I have underestimated for probably so how do you get like 20 something. How do you do it? How do you get enough of it? Because everybody knows that. That's like saying eating, nutrition is okay. eating better. Okay. Well, you just got to make it happen. Like for me, it was very easy to cut it out. Like every, when I was in school, I'd just cut it out. I would just. Cut sleep out entirely. Yeah, like I would just a, read yeah. until, depending on where I was, if it was like finals so you coming said up, that, I might read until 2 a.m. Right, but you said you like to stay up till 11, but now you go to bed at 10. How did you get yourself to go to bed at oh, 10? Oh, I have to like make myself. I literally have to like look at it. And I've realized this when I say, that's why I say lights out at 10. Because when I say, and I love my whoop for this because it keeps me accountable. Like whoop. I can, so whoop. there you go. So yeah, okay. We got to it. It, yep. keeps <laughs> yes. it keeps me accountable for what yeah. time. Because when I say 10, I might be like, oh, it's 10. Like I got to go to bed. And then before you know it, it's like 1025 and you're like getting into bed. And right. then you like have to set the alarm and it's like 10 30 before lights are out and you're not asleep okay so, like, so you're actually, actually like so you have a way to like so whoop for those that don't know yep. is a wearable device that tracks uh amongst so other things like it this. tracks your yep. it tracks your sleep yep so that would be a really good hack it, yep. it really keeps me accountable for when i go to bed and yep. when i am waking up and how much sleep i am getting okay that was great that's hack. Good. good yeah we got there yes yeah. got that yes <laughs> good um what about you personally I'm, I'm so i'm not as good as yeah she, so I, i'm gonna start wearing a whoop it's awesome. So, <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I, like I don't have, I'm yeah. like, I have things I do, but with young kids, it's not an excuse. It's like, I'm at, I'm a little bit, it was like yesterday I was really tired getting home yesterday. I was like really like hoping it was gonna be an early night and it was just the opposite, but it was like, okay, this is the way it's going to be. We're, so I laid down with, I was very excited because Harley like, is like, I want to snuggle. I want to go to bed. And she said it because we just, you know. Um, really early. Sometimes it was like six thirty-five. I was like, "Yes!" <laughs> early night. Went upstairs, read books, did teeth, did PJs, laid in bed for like a half hour, and she's like, "I'm done. I want to go downstairs." You're like, "So I was like, so." No. And it became one of those nights where like we actually um, stayed up with the family doing the stuff in the living room. We got these new games and stuff till like you know nine thirty-five. Yeah. It was one of those nights we were up really late. So. Um, Harley was done sleeping. Yeah. So it was like, I, I, I don't, I'm not as good at it. Yeah. The one thing I'm really good at is getting up every single day at the same time. Right. That part of the routine. And yeah. I know it's actually can be a negative because it should be, I wake up when my body's ready to get up. I get up at 525 every morning. Um, but you do that for a reason. You do that because here's one of the things that I've is done is, um, I used to like not do a very good job of drinking water through the day. So I would get home and drink mm. a ton of water. Yeah. I'm like, now I have time. Now I'll drink water. <laughs> and then I'd be up peeing like two or three times in the night. <laughs> so that's one of the things I've learned about myself for gotcha. sure is don't drink two hours before bedtime. That's, that's, I call hack. that a hack. So, there we go. okay, we'll go. So that's like a long time got, to yeah. get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do well, nutrition next. We, we sort of hit that already. So maybe that's cool. I think, oh, paleo I think paleo meals power meals pre-made is a great hack. Like yeah. meal delivery service. You know it's clean. You know it's good. You know it's sourced well. It's convenient. Super yeah. convenient. Really tasty. Like that's a that's a great. Another Any, one for me is like yeah, working with working against the gravity and a D. And mm. she's helped me a lot with. Give both. a little bit of context to that in case um, people so don't know. So she gives me um, macros to hit throughout the day. So it might be let's just say three hundred carbs, one hundred and fifty protein, eighty fat. Um, and then I kind of like, and this was really hard for me getting into this was learning how to hit those numbers. And now I kind of like, I keep the same routine every single day and I like eating this exact same breakfast every single day. It's a similar lunch and similar dinner. And then, and I choose my snacks however I want to, but like things that both that keeps you, um, it keeps me consistent and she keeps me accountable. And then um, I was like deathly afraid of carbs. Like I would eat like skyrocket of fat throughout yeah. the day, um, but I wouldn't eat carbs. And that's something that we need to feel our body, especially around training. So that's something that throughout the years that I've learned to eat carbs and fuel my training with carbs. So both before and right after. So I like eating carbs in the day and then less at night. Um, so yeah. 
She That'd be my hack as well as I put I put carbs um, in and around my training. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I don't sleep so well if I eat too much at night, but definitely eat, feel a big eat too difference much carbs in training. Yeah. Not at the, night, but like you feel a huge difference in yeah, training. Gotcha. It's it's a I think that's a real game changer. Cool. Um, for our sport, right? So mm-hmm. it's different for every. Yeah, if you have it. intensity, if there's yeah, intensity it. Yeah. in it, you'll like bonk if you don't have any um, carbs yep. in your system. Got it. Um, training might be a a really deep rabbit hole, but any sort of specific hacks or, or, um, uh, things that you found have, have been particularly helpful in, in I maximizing got a, it. I got a big picture one there. Mm-hmm. Um, constantly varied function points point at relative <laughs> uh-huh. intensity. I was I mean, say CrossFit. <laughs> for real. Like, I mean, if you're talking about a hack, like what's going to give you the most value for the least amount of time and resource, it's like that for sure is like, I was trying to reach elite levels of fitness before by doing Ironman triathlons. Right. Like, well, when I found out about CrossFit, that was like a hack. Yeah. To elite fitness for sure. Like I was way off the spectrum, investing way more time. So if that's the way we're going to define the hack, like it's it's cross mm-hmm. CrossFit is the hack. Mm-hmm. For mine, it's definitely enjoying it and having fun. Because mm-hmm. so I feel like when you really like something, like you say, it doesn't. It's not like one of those things like I have to go to the gym. Like you're excited to go take a CrossFit class, and that's what I I totally agree with you. It's CrossFit for so many reasons that I think the program works. And when you start getting better at something. You start liking it more. And when you start liking it more, you start working more and it starts becoming the snowballing effect. And then another thing is I think you show up and you have a coach every day to coach you. And you have, you know, anywhere between 15 and 30 people doing it with you. So you have your kind of like your crew and your friends and you always have someone waiting for you. And it's not like, oh, I got to go to the gym. What am I going to do? Like you're like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. You have all your friends waiting for you. They're all doing it with you. And you have a coach telling you what to do. Um, what was the one I was going to go to next? Uh, mindset. Yeah. Let's do mindset. Um, we've talked, uh, or you, you've mentioned daily stoic. I would consider that sort of a, a you know, a, for those who don't know, daily stoic is a, a book and it gives you like one passage and a little bit mm-hmm. of, a little bit of good stuff to think about. It takes five minutes, 10 minutes, depending, I guess, on how long you want to stare at the wall after you read it. Um, so that's one, any other sort of mindset hacks or products or anything that, that you guys would recommend? Our white bracelets. Mm. So we have uh, like never whine, never complain, never make excuses bracelets. Um, and the idea behind that is um, the power of positive thought and basically like eliminate negativity from your head because what you focus on, you will see more of. If you're focusing on negative things around you, you're going to have more negative things come to you. Yep. It's that like secret thing that kind of like went viral a while back. But yes. it's true. If you're like, if you're going to buy a new pickup truck, all of a sudden you see tons of pickup trucks on the road. It's that frequency illusion. Well, the hack to that is if you think more positive thoughts, don't complain, you're going to have more positive things come into your life. All of a sudden, the obstacles that were once there are now might be opportunities. So this is for sure, it's a hack. It's a mm-hmm. um, it's a, it's a trick mm-hmm. that every time you do complain, you snap your bracelet and it pulls you out of that um, negativity loop and puts you in a better position so you're not you're at least aware how your thoughts become your words and your words become your actions so even though you're still complaining or still having nev- negative thoughts at least you're correcting them mm-hmm. you're, and moving forward it's at awareness yeah. level you have yeah. to be aware at baseline starting yeah. point mm-hmm. yep. i think another one is like the way that i learn the most is from other people's stories like if someone goes through something like a huge obstacle and then they overcome it and they make it the best thing that ever happened to them. Or, you know, you read something about someone else and you're like, you know that it's possible and you know mm. that it's achievable. It's like, you can always like, wow, like if that person can do it, like I can do it. Or mm-hmm. if you're going something hard and you're like, you learn something from real stories. So I love podcasts and whether it's podcasts or literally just picking up a new book. Like I don't even always finish the books that I'm reading. Like sometimes you pick up a book and you don't like it and that's okay. But just pick up a new book, like expand your mind. Like podcasts, you never know who you're, like half the time you don't know the names on there. Yeah. But the stories and the people that they are, it's like you always learn something new and you don't always even have to agree, but it gives you a new perspective and it gives you something to think about and something to go out in the day and just be like pondering about it. So you might learn something new. You might get a new perspective. You might, um, it might change your mindset. It might change your opinion on something mm-hmm. or just get you thinking. Um, and the last time you were here, I think you mentioned Michael Johnson's book as being uh, an early influence on you. Do you have maybe one or two other sort of books like that, that you took, um, you know, in, in that, in that realm sort of, of like hearing somebody else's stories and being able to take something out of it. Do you have one or two other recommendations for folks? Yep. Um, the Champions Mindset okay. by Jim Aframo. Um, how great champions think, train, and thrive. Um, 
Um, chop wood carry water. What is that one? Chop wood carry water. Chop wood carry yeah, water. I, I remember you one. Joshua Metcalf. Yeah, yeah. That Deep. one was very just like straightforward and um, all the lessons were really black and white. And that was more, probably one of the ones that I like enjoyed the most and mm-hmm. I journaled out of every chapter. Um, that that one was very, very good. Cool. Another early I actually really liked um, John Wooden's book too. Like 50 Years On and Off the Court. Okay. I think it was called. Yep. And that was just great about like about relationships too, about like how he built his team and um, how he treated each player on the team. Got it. Um, last one, relationships. Good what segue. kind of, yeah, very good segue. <laughs> um, hacks, tricks. Almost as if it was planned. Yeah. Um, things you guys do to make sure that it, both of your lives I, I know are um, incredibly busy and incredibly uh, focused on obviously different things, but, but very uh, similar. How do you guys make sure that you're not um, losing sight of the value and the 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 worth of of making sure you have strong connections and strong relationships. Um, for me, it's obvious. I can see it in my mood and the way I act if I haven't been taking good enough care of it. Mm-hmm. So it is really like um, when I'm here, I spend a lot of time with the Bergeons and they're my family here, and um, really just love when I get my time with them. And um, when I'm home, it's like spending time with my friends and my family but most of the time I am here so it really is FaceTime and it Mm. is text and I know like when I'm training or like I can't be on my phone that much that's why I use time where I'm either and this is not mindful eating I'm very very (laughs) with that and something that I can work on but I love FaceTiming while I eat so Mm -hmm. it might be over breakfast lunch or after training um, so it, like I'm the multitasker of the year here. I might like sometimes I'm in the norm of text, yeah, I'm eating like my dinner and FaceTiming someone. So yeah. it's just like when you try and maximize your time, none of it's taken away from the other <laughs> except for the mindful part of the eating. Um, so that's something that I try and do. And I try yeah. and like stay connected. And I literally like every time I'm, I'm like, oh, I should like call this person or this person. And like you say, like there's not it's not necessarily you have like millions of people. It's just like you have my best friends and I have my family. And those are the relationships that I really value and I try and really work on them. Um, I know for you, you sort of mentioned it. Um, you want to make sure you're home at 5.30. Yeah, it's my schedule. Computers off, yeah, computer's not there, phone's yeah. upstairs. Um, and, and obviously family's uh, an incredibly important part of you. But I'm curious for you, um, what about sort of friendships and what about the, the sort of the non family relationships that I know you put a priority mm-hmm. on, um, even if they're not, you know, you don't have a thousand best friends, but like, um, I, you know, I think of Derek, I know how, yep. how important that relationship is. So I'm curious how you've come to think about, um, making sure you don't lose sight of that. Cause it could be, it's really easy to lose sight of that with yeah. two businesses or three businesses and yeah. kids and all that stuff. Like, uh, I mean, I've definitely systemized and put, put, um, um, hacks or tips and tricks and tools in place for the optimizing my family i have not done that for my friendships but some things i do um is um like a monthly lunch and and or like a we'll turn that into when the weather's nice is like a friday afternoon hike nice um and then we do um two couples vacations a year Mm -hmm. so um, a few couples that we get along with really well. Um, we have like three or four of them that will go. It would go, be bad to do that with couples you don't get along with. Yeah. It would that'd be a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we go like away. It's just, um, we do one in the fall and one in the spring. We make yeah. sure that that happens as well. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's spot on. I think that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking about. Okay. Uh, that was really cool. Thank you, Katrin, uh, for coming in. Um, hopefully we'll have you back soon. Uh, Thanks and for having me. we'll see everybody <laughs> on the next episode. Cool. Thanks, Kat. You can get every episode of Chasing Excellence wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for listening.